So I'd like to start today by um, jumping directly into monday.com. And the first thing we're going to do is go over the um, first key point I'd like to raise, which is so important in monday.com. And I, I do stress it when, with every um, uh, person we speak to is this golden rule of building a board in monday.com um some of you might be familiar with this but um others are just starting their monday.com journey or are wondering just how how we do build monday.com boards it's really important that we hold on to this golden rule and we understand uh it should be absolute sorry i'm just letting emily, emily sort out the chat there um Yes, so basically, um, this golden rule is so crucial, especially when you're um, starting with monday.com, because not a lot of people really understand this. So let me go to our training workspace. There we are, might be familiar to some. And when we build monday.com, a lot of people come from um, another piece of software, and very commonly they come from Excel. And when people come from Excel, they are, um, they're, sort of held back by uh the lack of automation the lack of integration you know excel sheets are, are great and they're flexible but they don't really they don't really do much they don't really interact and they can't really sit at the heart of your business like like monday.com can so when it comes to when it comes to building a monday.com board and then getting the most out of the features you can with the platform then it's really important um to understand this golden rule Karen, that's a lovely question. That's really, really good. So first off, let me go through the golden rule and I will answer your question um, straight after. So when we're talking about building a monday.com board, what we really do need to focus on is the idea that when we uh, create a board, it's not like Excel where you can do just about um, everything with the columns and rows. To get the most functionality out of Monday, and the reason why it's such a powerhouse of automation and workflows and integration, is that Monday cells can't be as flexible as an Excel spreadsheet. Oh, there we go. Lovely job. Good question. Let me sort that out for you. Let's get this as low as possible. That should be slightly lower, hopefully. Maybe I'm coming in a little bit louder now. Let me just increase my volume a touch. There we go. That might be a little bit better. There we are. Um, so hopefully, hopefully the jazz is down a, a down a bit, a bit more. So when it comes to building Monday.com, each column is its own column type. So we have person columns where we can assign certain people here, which is really good. So we uh, can assign certain people, we can assign dates and we can change statuses. This should all be quite sort of familiar to you, but it doesn't really allow us to, um, it doesn't really allow us to be able to um, have anything in these columns. This is a date column. It goes all the way down to the bottom of the board. Lovely job. There we go. Lovely job. Perfect. Um, so when we have these uh, column types, the golden rule of Monday is that when we have a certain board, all of the columns on that board are shared by all of the items. Now in Excel, nothing stops you from creating text in one column and numbers in another column and dates in another column going down from the same column for each different row. However, when it comes to Monday, each column is its own column type, and then it goes down the board. Now, a lot of people, when they start from Excel, they come into monday.com. Let's say this new board is just a new project. Let's put this as a new project. And let's say um, this group up here is our pre-project phase. This is our active phase. And this is our uh, roundup. Three very easy column types. Now, what a lot of people do an action in here action one and action so what a lot of people do they go okay well pre-project we actually need a lot of files to do with it we've got tasks in here and we need to add a, a files column to be able to understand in this pre-project phase um what actually needs to be done here and the files are only really important to the pre-project phase so what they do is they they go okay i can add a column here so i can add a files column and then sometimes they're a little bit disappointed where we go, but the files have been added to all of the items on the board, not just the items 
in the pre-project phase. So there's files down the entire board. They go, well, I, I don't want files down here in the active phase. I don't need them. So I'm going to delete it from here and get rid of it. Because all the items on your board share the same column types. And people see this as a limitation. But the, what I stress about this is that we kind of need this structure to build on the functionality and the automated uh, purpose that is monday.com. And if you find yourself where you've got some items in the board and some items in the same board that need different column types, that is when you actually consider moving that data to another board. Now, a lot of people who come to us for CRM, they go, oh, well, I just kind of need one board, right? What I can do in, in CRM is that I can just have one board and in this board, I can have uh, contacts in one group and I can have accounts in another group. That, that's absolutely fine. But intrinsically, your data is going to be different between accounts and contacts. For instance, your contacts are going to have an email address. Your contacts will have phone numbers and they might have, you know, birthdays and how many pets they have and whatever you want to capture for that contact for marketing purposes or just to, you know, make sure you, uh, you keep up to date with them. But with accounts, we don't have emails for accounts. We don't have, maybe we'll have an office phone, but we don't really have phone numbers for accounts. Um, addresses, we normally have addresses for accounts, so we know where the businesses are based, but we don't really have addresses for contacts because that would be a bit odd. We wouldn't really need addresses for individual contacts, and I don't think I'd want everyone at, uh, everyone's addresses. I think it's better at the account level. So intrinsically, your information is going to be different. And if you try to put them on the same board, you're going to have massive amounts of empty space where it's not really, really going to be used. So at that point, it's really important that you separate out those different pieces of information on different boards. So you really evaluate your process when you're building Monday.com. And that's why it comes to this golden rule that, you know, every configurator that goes for it and consultants, we, we just understand that this structure is very important in Monday.com, that across the entire board, no matter what group, all of the items, all of these individual roads share the same column types. You can't restrict columns to different groups. You can't put columns on, on just certain rows and, and not others. So that is where this golden rule sort of lies with Monday.com. But there are ways around that. So for instance, we have these items here for this project. And let's say there are costs associated, but the costs are only associated at certain stages. We've got costings to do, particularly in the active phase. And we want to put costings in. Now, if we decide to put a numbers column here, and we put associated costs, which is fantastic, and we can put our sign on, there we go, and we can put costs in here. Well, that's great, but it leaves us with a lot of empty space. We need another level of data information that we can then assign to this board being only specific to certain rows, certain rows within a group. Now, the way that we do this, the way that I advise, is always to look at your sub items and build sub items for that. So if I've got associated costs for items four and five in the active phase, what I can do is I can actually use my sub items to then associate these costs. And I can call this um, a consultant fee, Maybe we've got a legal fee down here. The cost down here could be paper supplies. There we go. That's a lid cost. And we could then associate these costs to these items at a sub item level. Because our sub items don't have to share the same column types as our main items. I've got status at the main item level. I've got some uh, status at the sub item level. But if I get rid of this sub item status, doesn't delete it from the main item level. Same with this date. I can add a, a formula column up here. It doesn't add it at the sub item level. I can add a docs column here. It doesn't add it at the main item level. These are two separate areas of information. And actually, I'll be digging through sort of like the Monday nomenclature and showing you actually what sub items really are, because they're not really, they don't really exist on the board they're on. Um, so we'll, we'll be seeing that in the next section. But that gives you this other level of um, data that you can associate with your items. 
where you don't have to share it with all the other items on the board by using sub items. However, there is another golden rule for sub items. So our golden rule is all the items on the board, regardless of where they are, have to share the same column types. One moment. That's a very good question. That's a wonderful question. Since it's a part of sub items, let me answer this now. So a question was asked saying, does the sub item date impact the timeline of the group and the overall milestone? And what we're talking about there, and that's a really fantastic question. What we're talking about there is the impact of dates to dates. And in Monday.com, we deal with that with dependencies. So the idea of dependencies is what we can do is we can create the ability. And we've been doing this quite recently, actually. We can create the ability to change dates based on the changing of other dates in a vertical format. Now, the question was around timelines. So what I'll do is I'll create a timeline column so we can look at timelines. And let's put this simply for this week. And let's put it simply for that week. Let's put it simply for that week. So we've got five days, week on week on week. What our dependencies allow us to do is our dependencies allow us to build in the understanding of when items change. So what I mean by that is when our dates change, there we go. When our dates change, so too will our dependent dates change lower down in the chain. So, for instance, item one, if I change this by three days and I move this by three days, what we should see is our items below it also shift when Alex makes sure it's set to the timeline. Let me hit save. So as I change my dependent dates, 21st, for example, my my non-dependent date, the dates that are dependent on it, so will then shift accordingly. That's what we mean by um, when we impact the timeline overall as the group or as the uh, project, we can use dependent these to do so. And we can break these out of the group. I can make this dependent on item three, and I can make this dependent on item four, and we can move these and shift these over. There we go. And then as we shift these dates, so too will these dates shift lower down the chain. I'm gonna to need to add some dependencies in here because Monday can't generate dependencies or, or timelines out of thin air. So as I change this, let's push this all the way to September. So too will all my dependencies shift. And we can see this actually in the Gantt chart quite clearly. So you can see the dates dependent on each other and as they shift, so too does its dependent item shift and move according to the, its dependency. Lovely stuff. Now, the question that was asked is, does the sub item date impact the timeline of the group and the overall milestone? So they are two separate areas of Monday.com. When we build our dependencies, and I'll go through why dependencies are separated in terms of uh, um, items and sub items, it will become clearer later. But the reason why the answer is not at the moment is because dependencies exist on the area or the, 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 the part that they're built. So in this dependency column, I am able to go in here and I'm able to assign action one to be dependent on item five. And I can do action two dependent on item one or two or three or four or five or action one, whatever I so choose. But on the sub item level, your dependencies exist on that level. So when I open up my legal fee dependency and I'd like it set to item four, I don't get that option because I'm looking at the sub item level. So your, your sub item dependency pathway and your main item dependency pathway, they don't affect each other. We can actually see that if we look on the uh, Gantt chart. And we also fit and we add our sub items. There they are. Uh, they might be a little bit far back. There are our sub items. Might be taking a little bit of time to show. Uh, oh, I, it would help if I had some dates in there. Let's put these to uh, August just before. There we go. Let's put this in August. Let's put this one all the way back in November. So 
perfect. So if we look at our Gantt chart now, we should see two distinct critical pathways, one at the main item level and one at the sub item level. So we can allow our sub items to affect each other with these dependencies as I shift this. So to will my, my dates shift accordingly. If Alex had made sure we've saved that option. There we go, that's a bit better. So as I move my items on this Gantt chart, so they will move their dependencies at the sub item level, which is what we expect. But I cannot have items affecting sub item dependencies and I cannot have sub item dependencies um, changing main item dependencies. So a great question. I wanted to show you how we can use dependencies at the item level, at the sub item level. Um, in terms of if this is a planned feature, it would be difficult for me to say. I believe this did come up and this has been on the forums of people wanting a full dependency pathway throughout the board. At the moment, no, they're two separate fields. What I would recommend is I would have uh, milestone dates in your main items that you could then say, oh, when this changes to the 4th of October, I can make sure to change my uh, sub items down here to the 4th of October as well. And you could build in some sort of um, automation and notification to remind you of doing that. But it is a manual step to change your sub item dates once you affect the main pathway of your, your higher level, your, uh, your item level dependency items. So hopefully that makes sense. They are two separate pathways. So you can't impact them automatically, but manually you can go in and change your, you can set your sub-item dependencies, change the sub-item dependencies, and they will move to along with your, your main items. Lovely job. Let's see. Another question that came in, um, does the numbers column show a total in the sub-items as it did above? This is a very common question. So a lot of people go, if I build my numbers column here and I put 10 and I put 15 I put 25 so I get um main item summary columns and these main item summaries and these can be turned on and off in the uh the actual column settings we can hide column summary or we can show column summary and from a configurator point of view I always use this to actually set the units it's just a lot easier than going click settings, customize, and then do the units here. You can actually do it down here. And you can actually do the same if you have a formula column. So if I put, um, I'm just gonna grab my numbers column. I can set the uh, unit down here of the formula column quite easily as well, uh, just by clicking in summary down here and change the average and what have you. Um, so this is built in and normally uh, your summaries are on by default. You'd have to turn them off if you don't want to see them. Now, a lot of people ask, those summaries are great. I want to see them at the sub-item level. At the moment, you don't get sub-item level summaries. They don't exist at the moment. Um, I'm, I can't speak for Monday. Um, I know that it's been brought up once or twice, but there is a way around that. Because we have our numbers here. We've got 150, we've got two, 250, uh, we've got 10. All good. What we want to do is we actually want to summarize that. Um, and the best way of doing it by item is that we can use the sub item feature of showing the summary on the parent, which is down here. So I can summarize my number column up to the top and that gives me a number of 400. So that adds all of my numbers together. It's got you. So, um, as we summarize the numbers to the top, we then get our uh, show summary uh, um, column here as well. As you can see, um, since this is technically a mirror column rather than a number column, and we'll be going through that, it won't then show the summary for the entire group. Um, a good test of that, actually, if I quickly... Something that I don't really know. Um, Short footage, that's the one I want. I just want to check to see if the board footer will show up, but I don't think it will. No, the board footer won't won't summarize it either. Um, so if I add the summary back in, and then the board footer shows. So it is built on the uh, the group summaries. So you can summarize it by item, but you can't really summarize it by um, 
you can't really summarize it by a group, even if you're summarizing to the top. So what you can do, I'd probably recommend if you can formulate it, so you can do your sub item summary. Uh, let's do this sum, build sum, and then we want to take our sub item number summary against our main item number summary. That would give us our total. And then you've got your total here. So as you add numbers here, these will add together. I've put that to percentage because Alex is clever. There we go. Uh, and then we could do 520. And then we'll add it all together at the end. And that will give you your total per group at the end. You just need to formulate it out of that sub item summary column. So hopefully, um, hopefully that question is covered and that, that sort of makes sense. What is the number showing? Um, not a tough question at all. Uh, what is this number showing? At the moment, it's just it's just anything. Um, at the moment, it's just I've just created a numbers column. Um, this one here is the summary. So this is showing the summary of the numbers column down here. And this could be, we could say this is costs. And then when we associate costs, we can put a uh, pound sign. And then this one could also be further costs as well. Um, customize, it could be further costs. There we go. And then we get our total. There we go. So that gives our, our full numbers. I've just been I've just been typing in numbers just to uh, to, to to make the point as it were. Question come in as well. Are project managers have an issue with the Gantt view? Where moving dates does not account for non-work days, such as bank holidays. Forgive me, I had a, I had a drink before I got to the question. Is there any way to handle this? <clears throat> so when you are dealing with the uh, Gantt chart view, what Monday.com does is it just gives you its understanding of when days are worked. Now, what we need to remember is that Monday.com is a vast product that is used by everyone all over the world. And unfortunately, in the UK, we only have about I don't know, six holidays at most. But there we go. Um, no, we have more than that. We have 11. Sorry, we have 11 bank holidays and while everyone else has like 20. There we go. Um, so it would be difficult for Monday.com as a blanket to really put in what are non-workable days. However, what the Gantt chart will allow you to do is it will allow you to restrict... Uh, if I go to our view settings, it will allow you to show and hide weekends. So you can then start making your um, your weekends, um, your Gantt chart larger and smaller based on if you're counting Saturday and Sunday or not. But in terms of those days where it's like not not happening, not ha you know, there, 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 there is an event, something is happening or you've got a bank holiday, or you've got a public holiday. Um, at the moment, there's not any way of being able to mark that off in a Gantt chart. Um, there have been huge improvements to Monday.com in terms of changing work schedules and first days of the week and what have you. Um, so there is a um, a push to do this, as we can see here, set work days. So I'm able to set what's the first day of the week, show and hide and what have you. Um, I can even build in work schedules as well based on who works certain days. So if some people are working Monday, Wednesday and Thursday, I can set their work schedule, which will then affect not the Gantt chart, but the uh, workload feature to show if they're they're busy or not. If there's you know resourcing that can, can then be taken under consideration for temporary workers. But with the Gantt chart, you can't do public holidays. There will be a, um, I'm going to show you how to take uh, public holidays and um, uh, people having time off out of resourcing. But for the Gantt chart, you you just get Monday to Friday and or if you want Monday to Sunday. Hopefully that one makes sense. Can you make the summary total when using a number column total across the board? Yes, you can. Um, so what I did there rather quickly is that I had a, um, so I took a uh, Monday labs, forgive me, I took the Monday labs and I uh, allowed the board footer. So if I show you that quickly, I'll turn it back off uh, so we can see you doing that. Da -da 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 -da. Um, it depends on the account that you have as well, because you can lock down um, 
the uh, Monday labs to only certain users, such as admin and what have you. Um, but if you want to see a total for the entire board at the bottom, like all your groups put together very visually, what you can do is you can go into your, uh, your picture up here. You can go to Monday labs and Monday labs allows you to um, turn on mostly client side, uh, features that are not out yet, like the new My Work layout and what have you, convert board to project, all this lovely stuff, developer mode, which is useful for any devs that need to see uh, column IDs. The one we're going to look at is board footers. And we can see that if we just put in board up here, bring it up here, and I can activate this. Once you click activate, your monday.com will refresh. Hold on, we might need to close this panel first and it refreshes. There we go. Let's close the panel first and then refreshes. Um, and then if we now go to monday.com at the bottom, you should see board summary. And that's this gives us our total across the entire board. If I add, uh, if I add a number in here, so I add uh, another thousand, it gives us 2000, that gives us uh, 1590. So our total can be down here and this does it for just about everything. You can see me putting um, statuses in, there we go. I can add that new label and then it changes that summary at the bottom. Same two with timelines. I can put new timelines in and it will change the summary at the bottom. Now, if you want something that is a bit less developing and a bit more shareable that you want to share with everyone else, what we can do is we can, I'm going to grab a blank view and I'm going to grab a widget for this blank view. I'm going to call it numbers. And with this numbers widget, we can then select a, a column on the board that will summarize all of our costs. And we can do our total cost. And then I'll need to put a, uh, a number on that. There we go. So this then gives us our total. This is reflective of our summary total for all of the items on the board. And as this changes, let me just uh, put in. There we go. Should expect 27,000. And boom, we've got 27,000. Um, so we can create a blank view. And this could be a blank view on the board, or it could be a separate dashboard. Create a numbers widget, select the number column, and that will then give you your summary total um, across the board. Forgive me, the question was also across multiple boards. The way you would do that is by building a dashboard. The same way I've done so here. What you do is you just create a, oh, that's the wrong button, Alex. That's the very wrong button. We go new dashboard. Okay. We connect our boards together. I'm just going to connect one in here. Uh, yes, there will be a, a replay that someone asked if a replay will be sent out. There will indeed be a replay sent out. Um, so what we do is uh, we create a numbers widget and then we just select from the boards. Currently, we've only got one board, but there'll be multiple boards, which numbers column we want to summarize. And that will give us our total summary across those boards. So hopefully that makes sense. That's how you get a total number summary across multiple boards or indeed one board if, if you needed to a bit more visually. But for total boards, you just create this dashboard. We'll go into, into dashboarding a little bit later. Can the table at the top of the boards be moved in front of the main table? Does the main table always need to be the first tab? That's a very, very good question. And here we go. OK, this is very soon going to be a thing, being able to rearrange um, rearrange tabs. I can't share when or what have you. Um, my pleasure. I can't share when or what have you, but um, we have been told and it's been announced that we will be able to move these tabs. A good way of doing so, though, if you've got something that's really crucial and let's say we've got a very crucial. Um, what do I think is quite crucial? A crucial donut chart. Who doesn't love a donut chart? And I want to make sure that whenever someone comes on this board, this is the first view they see. I don't want them having to go to the main table and then, you know, going. Because I've seen a lot of people go, uh, click, oh, 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 God, click here, yeah, that sort of thing. Um, you don't need to worry about that. What you can do is any board that you have, any view on that board you have, you can set it as board default. And this is for everyone, not just you, for everyone who accesses this board. It will make that view the default view. So now if I go off and I'm on other boards and I'm, you know, I'm messing around somewhere else on Monday, I go back to this board. It will take me to that default view. And, and by being the default view, it is moved all the way to the left. But being able to rearrange these tabs 
I'm moving them here, there and everywhere, will be a feature relatively soon. I believe I can't give more into that, but that is a feature that is indeed coming. Lovely job. My pleasure. No worries. Um, Karen, I want to get back to you now. I don't want to, I don't, I, I you know, you asked this quite, you know, very start of the webinar. Let's make sure we um, sort this out. Hi, is it possible to create highlight reports extract into one combined report? Highlight reports. Uh, so in terms of, Karen, if you can give me a bit more information on what you, what you would, mean as by highlight reports but I'll, I'll i'll begin and and if i'm steering me the right way if, if if we get sort of off topic so in terms of highlight reports it depends on what board you're looking at um highlights could be you know what's happening this week or or, or you know what's going to be going out next week or um how how many statuses were changed this week or what the numbers were for this week that that sort of thing highlight reporting let me jump into our sales crm uh let's go to our deals Project status, risk, comment fields, etc. Gotcha, no problem. Okay, let's jump out of sales CRM back to work management. Um, so if we build this very bespoke view that we have, so let's say our uh, blank view, we've got a numbers widget here. Let's grab a chart widget showing our 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 uh, thing, our um our statuses. Uh, you said comments fields. Let's grab our um, board updates here. Lovely job. Here we. Yeah, there's no updates on the board yet. Let's rectify that. Uh, sandwich. That's what we're all thinking about right now. There we go. There we are. So we now have an update. Um, I now want to watch Scooby-Doo again. That's very uh, nostalgic. So we have our highlights uh, report here. And you said, um, is it possible to create highlight reports that extract into one combined report? Now, with Monday.com, you have sort of like, two levels of where data can be uh, uh, conglomerated. So data exists at a board level or at a dashboard level. And at board level, your data is relevant to that one board. That board is a contacts board, it's a sales board, it's a deals board, it's a, any sort of board like that. Or you've got it at a dashboard level. And the dashboard could be your sales dashboard for your leads, opportunities, deals, contacts, accounts, what have you. Or at a projects level, it could be a portfolio dashboard with all the different projects connected together and your risk registries and all that sort of thing. Um, so, so data exists at a board level or a dashboard level. Dashboard is the highest level we can possibly get. So when we talk about highlight reports, ideally what your highlight reports would be like per board. Like on this project board, um, how is our risk doing? What's our uh, project status per board and what have you? Um, how are we, forgive me if that came on the webinar, my phone buzzed and it nearly deafened me. Um, so if we do new projects, stay. so if we have these active project boards that have risk associated to them, or we might have separate risk boards, or we have comments that have came in through these boards, or um, we want the status of each uh, uh, project and the project items and what have you, we build that into a dashboard. And we duplicate this board with data. New project save. So dashboard is the highest level we can get. And depending on your plan is the amount of boards you can connect to a dashboard. Um, so you're looking to build a dashboard that you connect all your projects together. So you can see the different. There we go. I'm so glad I built those uh, dependencies because I can just put in a number here, a date, and then all of them should shift accordingly. Are these on strict or are these on flexible? No, we want them on strict. That's better. Uh, so if I move these down, there we go. That's better. So things will then shift and readjust. So when we connect these two project boards to this dashboard, we can then start building in overall understanding of risk and of numbers and of like batteries for our entire um, um, statuses. The idea of like project status per project is really good if your project is a board because there's a lovely widget that I really enjoy using called Overview. An Overview does a really fantastic, almost, almost portfolio-esque sort of system where it reads the board, it reads all of the statuses to see if you're on track or not. 
I've clicked that and it's taking me to the pod. Thank you, Monday. It reads all of your status and gives you a, are you on track? Are you not? Are you at risk? And then it gives you a progress bar. And it also gives you your dates, the earliest date to the latest date. So you can see per board where you are in terms of project status, in terms of risk. So it gives you that, that sort of overall picture. Um, it's the same if you build like updates. Yeah, exactly. Like an overview board, 100%. But this does this automatically for you. And for anyone who might be um, enterprise or looking very closely in work management, um, there are solutions coming for portfolio management and high level PMO that are um, currently being tested and fielded. It's not something I can show you, but it is it is eventually coming and Monday.com is making some great strides with that. So even though this is very rudimentary to begin with, there is going to be fantastic levels of portfolio management right around the corner. Karen, hopefully that it gives you an idea of how you can create that combined highlight report across all of your projects. Perfect, lovely job. What I can do, uh, Karen, I'll just give you a little slight thing on the side um, very quickly. I don't know, um, don't believe we've, we've ever spoke, but um, what I'd like to recommend to you on the marketplace is an app called Roll Up Multiple Boards. I'm not sponsored at all. Uh, they're just great guys. So Roll Up Multiple Boards actually allows you to uh, create a high level board that you create templates of low level boards for. And what it does, it actually rolls the data of the low level boards up to the high level board. What I'll do super quickly, if I can in my other monitor, is actually very, very quickly bring up Roll Up Multiple Boards because it's actually one of the most popular apps that we, we do indeed see when people ask about uh, portfolio management. And it's really, really good. So if I can just grab the package solution apps, I can look at Roll Up Multiple Boards. Lovely job. Uh, let me make sure I'm putting this into the right place. Otherwise, it's going to look very, very... Uh, embarrassing there we go high level board there we go so the idea of this is that with roll up multiple boards what we can do is we can have a high level board which is this one so we have a high level board and we can create our projects and we can say this is project alpha and with the app we can allow this to create a new project board which we should see popping in down here Give us some time. This is based on a, a, a template that we built in Monday.com. We just let Project Alpha come through, unless it's popped in up here and I'm, I'm crazy. It's always when I'm on a webinar. It's always when I'm on a webinar. Package solution else is where we need. Odd. Unless it's popped in somewhere and I'm not seeing it. There it is. There it is. There we go. Always, always making me look bad when I'm on a webinar. There we are. There we go. Um, so it creates the board. And what this app does is it intrinsically creates a connection between your high level board and Project Alpha. So if I go to the high level boards, you should be able to see Project Alpha has got in progress. I've got zero. I've got zero time allocated. I've got this and the other. And this is great if you have over like 20 or 60 boards and a dashboard is sort of out of the question. And you just want a quick show of, 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 of how your board's doing. Let me go in here and change some of these statuses. And if we're quick enough, let's be quick enough. Did you see that we changed to 36% progress? Because what this is doing is it's taking the percentage of done state, the amount of done statuses, and it's giving me a percentage across the entire board so if i go back to the high level board we should see this going up to 72 percent if i start going in here and i allocate some time so i allocate some time let's allocate 10 hours let's allocate 15 let's allocate 12 let's allocate five i've got 42 hours allocated if i go to the high level board i get that total in here as well if i start associating or people start logging their hours. It's like, I've done two hours, or one hour, I've done two here, and I've done 16 hours there, and I've done seven there, and this costs 20 quid, and this costs 50 quid, and this costs 15 pounds 35, and this costs eight pounds. As soon as I start putting in some of this data, it shows on the, this high level board. Finally, we can do the same with dates as well. So we can put in some of these deadlines. 
all of them in May, apart from this one, which is going to be all the way in October. If I go back to my high level, it's summarized as a timeline for me. So if you're looking for PMO and dashboards are maybe hitting a little bit of limit with the amount of boards you can have, um, Roll Up Multiple Boards is a fantastic app. We've used it many, 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 many times to great success and people are still using it. Um, and then you can, uh, and then it's only a one-off cost. So a lot of apps are like monthly, monthly, monthly. You pay once for roll-up multiple boards and then you then you just have it, which is fantastic. Um, Bart, fantastic question. Can you click on high level to take you directly to the low level boards? Uh, yes, yes, you can actually. Um, when you create a new board, it populates this board link column. So if I give this a click, it opens up the board here so I can quickly jump to it and I can quickly see it. Each board has its own board link that's automatically populated by roll up multiple boards. Can be a little bit of a uh, complicated um, uh, question, uh, question, I've got a complicated uh, app to set up, but the uh, developers done some fantastic documentation. It's wonderful. It's so good. Um, this is not an app webinar. Slightly, just slightly aside to anyone who's hitting any any things with Monday.com, they're called Excellent Team, and Excellent Team do some fantastic apps. Roll up sub items, so sub item roll ups aren't mirrors anymore. Uh, sync sub items to timeline, delayed status change, um, auto IDs, roll up multiple boards. We have used all of these apps to really great effect to bridge that final gap that we need. Um, so yeah, it's. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, it's exactly. Uh, it, it, it's a fantastic company. They do some do some great stuff. Lovely job. Forgive me um, if you're hearing any little uh, uh, noises. I'll try not to make too many of them. It's uh, it's just my browser. My browser makes those noises. So apologies for any sort of like shocking jarring noises there. I'll try to. I'll try to keep it. Uh, I'll try to keep it down there. So the second uh, tip we're going to go to, so the golden rule quite a while ago, but I love these questions. Keep bringing them on if you would uh, if you would like any of your questions answered. The second one I want to talk about, and I'm sure a lot of people find this very daunting, so it's really important that we actually discuss this, is connectivity. Connecting boards one to another. And what I will say is that it's like the number one Thing people come to us for in terms of training in terms of assistance connect two board columns and mirror columns and we do this in our advanced session our advanced training does cover uh, connect two board columns and mirror columns but i would argue they are probably the hardest things to know within monday.com so let's give it a let's give it a try shall we so <laughs> for this use case what we're going to do is we are going to create us a high level board so we're going to create a high-level board and we're going to call it um, Portfolio Board. And these are going to be called projects. That's what we want. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a portfolio management board. We're going to connect our projects in there. We're going to create the projects. We're going to connect the projects in there. And then we're going to see what we can do with roll-up multiple boards. So my projects are going to be projects. I'll call it new project one. There we go. One. Project two. Lovely job. So these are the uh, the boards. Let's, you know what? Things normally come better in three. So let's do new project three. Lovely job. There we go. Here we go. There we go. So I've got my three project boards. Let's make this look a bit neater. It's got projects. There we go. I'll put my project boards in this little folder here. Two, one, lovely. And above it, we've got the portfolio board. So what I want to do is I want to connect my uh, projects into this portfolio board. And I want to then summarize the data in. Now, I can do this and it's and it and it's and it's really good but how do I you know if I start changing the statuses in this project board how do I see this in my portfolio board how do I connect these together and the answer to that is the connect to board column so if I hit the plus here I've got this little uh, you can see it here I'll open it up in more column center 
It's these two down here we're going to be talking about, our connect to board column. Now, in monday.com, oh, it's a bit of a misnomer. These do connect boards together, but then we don't connect board data to board data. We connect items to items. So what the connect to board column is asking is, in this board called portfolio board, you want to look at the items in another board. So what board do you, of, do you want to look at to pull those items? So I want to look at the new project board and the new project two board and the new project three board. And Monday is hiding it amongst the list. There we go. So I can actually connect three different boards to here. And I can connect the boards here, lovely stuff. Perfect. So now I have a connection to all three of those project boards and I can start connecting the items accordingly. So I've got item one, two, three, four. So I can start connecting these. Here we go. Item one, item two, item three, item four, four and five, item uh, action one and action two. Lovely job. Now for uh, the new project two line, I want to start connecting items from the new project two board, which I can do by using this drop down to change that board and then connect the items from there. Three, four, and five. And then action one, and then action two, lovely job. And then for project new project three, I can go here and connect the items. Here we go. Oop, do, do. There we go. One day doesn't want to connect that item. That's better. There we go. They're all connected. Lovely job. So we have connected all the items of the project boards to the singular item in our portfolio board. Lovely stuff. What we can then do is we can start using mirror columns to represent the data summarized in this board. So if I grab myself a mirror column, there we go. what mirror column does, it goes, okay, I'm here to look at a connect to board column. You have a connect to board column somewhere in this board. Which one do you want me to connect to? And the one we want to connect to is the one called connected boards, which I'm actually, for the sake of things, we call uh, all projects. I was so close. Cool projects, not cool projects. There we go. And then with the mirror column, it goes, okay, so your connect to board column is looking at the items. As a mirror column, I want to look at a column type that you want to summarize. So the mirror column will go, fantastic. What, what column that isn't the item name do you want me to look at? So it's looking at all three of these boards and it goes, what column type do you want me to look at? And then summarize the data from and into this board. So let's say I want to look at the statuses. So I can change this to status. Here we go, status, and status. So this is showing a summary of all the item statuses here in the top level board. If I go and change all of project two to red, completely stuck, there we are, my, uh, my summary will be all red as well because it's mirroring that data. It also allows you to actually drill in from here. So I can I can click here and I can see project one and one of them is stuck. If I click this, I can see it's new action, it's action two. Cool. If I click this again, it gives me the information regarding it. And I can change it to done. I can assign myself. I can put a total cost of 50 quid. And then this will have changed here in my lower level board. So a lot of people use connectable columns as a way of portfolio management, dealing with all their projects in one place, because they can summarize the mirror, uh, the the um, status columns with the mirror. They could summarize do, do, the cost columns, uh, total cost. Uh, it's got to be a number, doesn't it? Further cost, further cost, and further cost. So then I can get my numbers together. So our mirror columns allow us to summarize this data. <laughs> Another way that this is used very commonly is in CRM. If you um, are a subscriber to the monday.com CRM sales CRM product, what you should have seen is that your boards connect together with these connect to board columns and they look slightly different, uh, uh, to be honest with you. Um, they look slightly different because aesthetically the sales CRM looks a little bit more CRM-y because it has to be... Um, it has to be uh, um, 
what do we say? It has to be a bit more comfortable for salespeople. Salespeople are a fickle bunch. They like things looking pretty slick and sheeny and nice. So um, that's why the sales CRM looks a little bit different. But these here are our Connect to Board columns. Um, you can see here, I can I can grab a contact here. And this is really important for CRM. You know, the relationship management of CRM is, is crucial to these connections. So in our accounts, for example, we have uh, a connection to our contacts and we are mirroring through any deals that are associated. In our contacts, of course, we have connections to the accounts and what deals uh, that, that that contact is going through. In the deals, we have connections to our contacts and even to our leads as well to see exactly um, the information. And this interconnectivity is crucial to make sure that we are... Uh, we are having this overall picture because it's this interconnectivity in our in our uh, CRM that allows us to go to the accounts board and see our overall picture in our overview widget. So we can see all of our uh, emails that might have come in and out. There we go, all that lovely stuff. Um, it wasn't me to me, you're not looking gym ready today. I never look gym ready. Uh, we can get our summary of the board. We can also then see in any uh, anything that's interconnected. So for uh, Bin, Bin Deer Inc, we can see the contacts that are associated uh, with this company called Bin Deer. And this one should be connected to our deals, but it might be a little bit slow. That one's just going to be slow on me, isn't it? But we've got our connections to our contacts and we can see the information regarding our contacts here as well. Because we have used a connect to pod column to say for this account, we have Alex and we have Madison. These are our two contacts. And therefore, we can pull the information together. So it's that interconnectivity in Monday.com that is really crucial and it's really important. A few things about mirror columns and connect to board columns that you might not know. A lot of people ask, and especially when I started with Monday.com, they go, I want to be able to change a status in another board. It is, it's the sort of the, the, the golden egg that everyone likes. It's like a change of status in this board, it changes in another board. Can I do that? And the answer is yes. And it's got a big old caveat on it. Because the way that automations work, you have to write them, you have to be very specific. Monday needs to know what you want to do with them. Let us say we have marketing board where we have different pieces of um work that need to be done and they need to go to a secondary board so let's say this is uh let's say that these are marketing team here this is gonna be nerving um let's say that these are these are oh god email campaigns yes there we go i've done it campaign one Spell campaign right. Yes, I spelled campaign right. Good, 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 good. Got all the eyes of marketing upon me. I'm very concerned. I'm very worried. Um, these email campaigns need to go then to a graphic designer. They need to create custom graphics. Um, you know, they need to um, Photoshop someone onto a, a lawn chair with a flamingo and a sombrero on him and sunglasses. Bradley. So sometimes they need to do that as well. So it needs to go to uh, the design team. And the design team have their own board because they're doing their own stuff. The design team are doing their own stuff. It might be to do with email campaigns and marketing. Maybe uh, you need to do uh, some brochure work for the events. Or maybe the design team is a part of the company as a whole. You're a, you're a graphics design company. So the design team sort of just do just about everything. But some of the stuff they do is for marketing as well. And what we want to do is we want to say that when we change the status of something in here, so so campaign one has been made in here. Campaign one, there we go. Once we change this to done, we want to change this here to done as well. How on earth do we do that? How on earth? Um, because when we write automations, we write automations at a board level. So when we write an automation to say, once states changes are done, to change another states are done, we do that at a board level. We can't do it across boards. But we can use mirror columns. And this is a very sort of niche thing. If you guys want to change states between boards, please pay attention. This is a very good tip. I'm expecting Sam to make a video on this one because it's not very well known. <laughs> Let's say we want to connect 
to our uh, design team board. Lovely job. And we want to make sure that our statuses come through as well. Now, first off, the thing that I would do is I would create an automation to create the items automatically and link them. Because otherwise it's a bit of a pain in the backside and I don't really want to do that. So I want to be able to create an automation that will create these campaigns in there for me. So we're moving on to automations after, but I'll write a quick automation recipe. So let's say when the status in here changes to to design then what we want to do is we want to create an item we'd like to create an item in a board so we want to create it in the design board design team board there we go we want to make sure we pull some information along we just want to pull the name for now good lovely job and then uh we want to make sure that the connection is made for us we don't want to have to select the connection so we can say we can connect it within this board in the design team connect to board column. So I want you to create the connection there. And we can see this in action when we set these statuses to two design. One, two, three, stand back. I expected a bit more of a, a drink break there, but one, two, three. We've connected, we've created these three items and we've connected them automatically via the automation. Now, what we want to say is when the status in here changes to done, we would like to update this marketing team status to done as well. So let us write an automation. So I'm just going to add a custom automation. and I'm going to say once the status changes, something change another status to something else. So we want the status or actually, let me just change this to make sure it's marketing. Uh, no, not marketing status, it's called design status. There we go. So we can differentiate, and this is marketing status. There we go. So once we change the status in the other board, we want to change it in this one, and we can do so via the mirror column. So let's do this. So we want to say we're going to change the marketing status to done when the marketing status, we can't select the mirror column. The reason for that is we wrote that in a custom recipe. We went into our automations. And we hit add automation. We try to write one ourselves. Yep. Your first mistake. Um, and it's a mistake I made it a lot, a lot, a lot. If you go into templates and they've just added this now, and never used to be this thing, you had to dig through them. We've now got a category called mirror. So if we select this, these are the free templated recipes and this was way 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 before money would allow you to even write custom recipes you had to always use templates these templates allow you to automate off of mirror columns which is fantastic your mirror column has to be the trigger though not the receiver not the action we can't change a mirror column with a status change in our board we want a mirror column in our board to change the status in our board so the mirror has to be the trigger not the action so if I use this, when status changes to something, change another status to something, I can now select the design status. See, it has to be the trigger. It can't be the action. Very good. I will answer that in one moment. That's a very good question. I will use the design status. When it's changed to done, we change the marketing status to done. So if I now go into my design board, I'm going to be super quick. And it changes to done. Are we ready? Go. This changes to done, changes the marketing status to done. So we're using a mirror column as a trigger to change the status in here. Comes with caveats. It is a one-to-one -one connection. You know, a singular board's connected in here. And when it changes to done, if we have multiple in here, it breaks. So if I connect this to campaign one and two and three, this is no longer a singular done it, it, this doesn't say done this is a conglomeration this doesn't work anymore so if i change oh god if i change number two to done because i've connected all three in here so if i go in here and i change the number two to done this isn't going to update this to they've up they've they've changed it okay 
Monday changes every day, it seems. It's still going to work. It is still going to work. However, it's not really going to be beneficial if you've connected three items and only one of them changes to done, because that's automatically going to change the uh, the status in this board. You've, you can't say once all three connected items change to done, change the status in here to done. It's usually a one to well, it is. I mean, I couldn't think of a UK case for that, so I'm just going to ignore that. But it's a one to one relationship. Once the status in this board on this item changes to done, change the status in this board's. Uh, this this change the item status in this board to done. So it's this one to one relationship. I wonder why three didn't fire. That's rather odd. Why did three not fire? It did. Okay, rather rather odd. So we have a question. Um, is it possible? Hold on. Oh, thank you, Bradley. Is it possible to copy updates to a connected item or view, edit an update from the connected board? That's a fantastic question. Now, updates exist on the item in the board you created. So if I go in here and I go to the design board and I go, this rules and then animal donkey donkey will do there we go <laughs> there we are lovely stuff so i've created a very useful update here against the campaign one in the design board if i go to the marketing board i can't really see that and i can't create a mirror column to mirror the updates that's not really can't really really do that um, because it's not a it's not a column on the board. It's just the it's just the updates. You can see these updates if I click campaign one here, and I click the conversation button where I can see that that update in here. It will drag me over to that item. So it will, it will force you to leave the marketing board, so you won't be able to see it on the marketing board. The only thing I can recommend is that once Monday gets to a point where it, you know you you haven't got you haven't got there yet you can either do something natively which can work or you can do something via an app so natively what you could do and i don't like this and i you know i'm not a peddler of this because i don't think it works very well but hear me out you can create a notes text column or long text column and then what you can do is you can mirror that because it's actually a column on the board so i can now mirror the notes Oops, and then the note here would be note here would be uh, this rules and then donkey because you can't put gifts in notes so not not as useful you know we're, we're all missing the donkey there he is lovely job um, but if we go back to our marketing board it has you see i've connected it here i'm going to disconnect uh, number one as well um so it pulls through here so you can see the notes visibly the other thing you can do is uh, another Monday.com partner is um, has created an application uh, called the Conversations app. So if I go here and I go Conversation, this application allows you to see conversations from connected boards. It doesn't allow you to, this could have changed, but this, ooh, let me just get out this, get out this, sorry. yeah, this doesn't, allow you to add to that conversation because the the updated conversation is happening on that board over there but this does allow you to visibly see the conversations from connected boards so this actually creates a a view in your item called conversations that pulls all of your connected items updates together against the item it's connected to and allows you to visibly see all of that dialogue i would always I would always um, judge whether you want to create an item in another board or you move an item in another board. Because when you create an item, da -da 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 -da, there we go. When you create an item in another board, it's going to create an item without any of the original updates because it's an entirely new item. However, if you move an item, uh, design team, there we go, uh, there we go. There we go. If you move the item, the updates will come with it. So there's a dichotomy in Monday of do you do you create a new item 
or do you move the item? And if the conversations are really important to you, and moving a good example of that is like a lead to a contact or a deal to an opportunity, you want to keep that conversation going, you should be moving the item between the boards, not creating items and connecting them. Because when you create an item, it's an entirely new instance. An example of that would be like uh, a deal gets to a certain stage and you create a quote. If you want to see the conversation about deal, you can go back to the deal, but you create a quote item rather than moving the deal to 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 an actual quote back. Lovely job. Thank you for that question. Um, I'm going to suggest we have maybe a about five minute break at 10 past, simply because um, it's been about an hour and 10 and it'd be good just to rest my voice just a bit five minutes. Um, so we'll do a... Uh, brief um little uh break at 10 past and then what we can do is we can come back and if anyone's got any questions please leave them in the chat during the little intermission and then i can get to them once i return if that sounds uh, agreeable agreeable with everybody so we can have a, a brief little um that's a sabbatical but that's not the right question and afterwards, we'll come back to um, automations and building them. We've done a little bit here. And then we'll be going into like the advanced features like canvases and docs and what have you. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. My apologies. The kettle is never quick enough. Oh, I have a question. Lovely job. It's very good to come back to. Let me jump back to the boards and let's have a read. <clears throat> Thanks for the miracle on the voice. You're most welcome. What about when you have connected boards where they are private or closed? For example, um, members of one board need to see the status, what the status is, but don't we don't want them to see updates, other columns, or be able to direct themselves to that other board. Understood. Now, the way the connect to board column works, and that's a fantastic question, by the way, the way the connect to board column works is that it connects to another board. And I know it connects data from another board and we can just say, you can only look at these items and you can only look at these uh, mirrors and what have you. However, it is still connecting to an entirely other board. So your ability to see anything within that column is intrinsically tied to your ability to, um, intrinsically tied to your ability to see the board in general. So, so there's no way to d disperse that. There's, there's no way to sort of get around that. So connect to two board columns won't allow you to connect to private. It'll allow you to connect to private boards. But if people are not privy to those private boards, they won't be able to see the data coming out of it because then it would allow you to get around that by being able to click the item and, and seeing all the information. Monday wants you to have the ability to be able to click these connected items and see all that information. So you wouldn't be able to uh, to to see that. There's two ways of getting around it, though. Uh, don't want to see the updates. OK, I have one way of you getting around that, not two. Um, the way I would probably get around that is that in the board, you want people to see, but you don't want them to see any of the other pieces of information. Let's do the new project board instead. If we want someone to be able to see this board, we don't want them to read the updates. We won't, don't want them to see any other information, but we want them to see. Um, uh, we want to see the status, as you said. Yeah. So you want them to just be able to see the status. What you can do is you can create a table view where you go. Right. I'm going to hide the columns, everything apart from the status, name and status. That's all I care about. Let's say for the sake of example, we also put the timeline there as well. So we've got to, we, two columns. We only want them to see that. And we can call this our restricted view. Lovely job. So this now allows you to be able to share that information with them. And how do we do that without actually giving them access to the board though? Um, Monday's got a feature in views to be able to share them out via a public link. So if I go up to the restricted view here to these three dots and I hit share, what you can do is you can actually give out a uh, public link. Forgive me, this is gonna make a noise. Um, so don't be scared by that. Um, what this allows you to do is link out this particular view and then when people click this link, they will only see 
that view. They can't. Uh, they can open the sub items, but they, you know, pretend this book. Your example denies for sub items. You can get rid of sub items or hide them if you want. What have you? Um, but this won't allow them to change anything. This won't allow them to update and see like open, see the updates or anything like that. It won't be allowed to delete anything or move anything. But they're able to see those statuses. They're able to see the columns that you restrict and allow them to see. The downside of this is that it, it's just a link. If I sent this to my mum or my dad or my dog, they'll be able to, I don't have a dog, they'll be able to open up that link and be able to see that, that information as well. So if it's very sensitive information and you couldn't trust the people with that link, then that would be an issue as well. Um, what you could do is create another board that you connect to that board that when the you create the items as items are created. You mirror the status that they won't be able to see, but you use the automation that I showed you that when the mirrored status changes, it changes the main status on this board. And then that board is visible, even though they can't see the mirror column that you're using to change the status from the other boards to this visible board. I've said board about 18 times. So what I'm saying is that for instance, your design board would be the board you don't want them to see the updates for, but they need to see the status of. Your marketing board will be this copied board that just copies all the information, the, the all the items in. And when they change the status on the marketing board, um, let's pretend this is grey, um, they won't see this mirror column because they're not privy to the board and its connections. But the automation will still work that when you change the status, it will update the status in here. So they'll be able to see the status changes because the hidden mirror column will be affecting it in that board that they're visible to them. But all they'll be able to see is the item names and the, uh, the, the status itself. Hopefully that makes sense. There's like two ways around it. It's using the shareable public link or it's using that mirrored status automations to do some changes. If you need a follow-up, please please let me know. That's quite a little complex thing, but hopefully that gives you some ideas of how to, how to kind of get around that. My pleasure, my absolute pleasure. <clears throat> so we've talked a lot about automations. Uh, there's only one more I really want to outline for you guys. And I think the importance that I showed you in automations is a lot of people, as they, as they should get in the habit of, is building automations by themselves, right? being able to uh, craft their own automations and their own sort of uh, uh, custom recipes, which is fantastic. Hopefully you guys have given it a try and you've gone in here and you've been able to add your little qualifiers, little sounds demeaning, add loads of qualifiers and loads of extra actions and making really complex automations. Now, if you didn't know, there's, there's two things about automations I wanna go over. But when we're talking about custom recipes, Monet has done a fantastic job of actually merging automations and integrations together. There are still two separate buttons for them, but they kind of go into the same place. If you're in the automations menu and you're writing an automation, but if you've looked at your integrations and gone, oh, right, when the when a new item is created, send an email, and when the state is changed, send an email, none of these really work for me. If you go to your automations and you write one you can say when the status has changed to something and the specific person is this person and the number is above this amount so let's say once the status changes to indesign the person is assigned to me and the number like a cost associated is greater than Ten thousand. So you could use this for new deals or a cost for a marketing that needs to go through like a higher up. You can then say you could notify, but you could also send an email to someone. So you can build your integration triggers directly into custom automation recipes. So if you've looked at your integrations, and none of the triggers really exist for you. You can use those triggers in the uh, custom automation suite, not only for integrations, native integrations like HubSpot, he says, checking. I shouldn't name all of them because not all of them are really associated. I know Gmail is in there. I think MS Teams is in there. Slack is in there and what have you. So integrations are built into your automation suite, but so too are apps. So if you've got things, so we've got item, um, we've got item name automations as an application. We've got 
uh, no, that's AI, sorry. We've got item name automations as an application somewhere in here. Uh, we've got uh, column magic. We've got super form. We, there they are. <laughs> there they are. We've got roll up multiple boards. We have start and end timeline. We have general caster. So if you're looking through applications as well, and you're like, these pre-built recipes for caster, for example, which is a fantastic app, don't really do it for us. They're not, they're too specific they're, they're too generic for what i need the the trigger to be you can use your actions in your uh automation suite to fire off applications so i can do column magic doing simple math and then i can do uh item name automations and then i can do a little bit of uh start and end timeline so you can you can trigger like four or five different apps from one native trigger action so you can fire five apps from one app, from one trigger in Monday.com, which is fantastic. So your automations, your custom automations are not just for Monday to Monday, change of status, send a notification, move to group, create item in board, also includes any applications that you buy and use as well. Fantastic stuff. Lovely stuff. I'd like to go over um, some different um use cases that have come up recently and how we've used monday's product suite to actually um assist with that because i know a lot of people look at monday and they go oh monday is a project management tool and you're absolutely right monday is a project management tool that's great but it is also a work os <laughs> It started as a project management, but it is so much more than that now. And I know a lot of people are, are starting to get used to uh, the different products that you can see in Monday.com. But there are a few that are, are quite new, or there are features that have come out and people just don't really click with them. But I think it's really important to go over um, what is uh, actually happening with these new products. Now, I won't go into that. Like, we've done a webinar about sales CRM. Um, I might do one about dev as well, if people are interested. I um, mean, all these two, they're, uh, they're going to be they're going to be replaced. But we, we do have work management. We have sales CRM. We have dev as well, which is really good. Richard, there's no DOF questions here. In automations, can you write something to a text field or a drop down? You're creating a board using an automation. There is a field which needs a value to be written to it for each item creation. Now, that's a good question. Is the text field a dynamic value or is it a static value? Because Monday, that's a really good question. Thank you for bringing it up. There is a really um, unknown kind of feature that is technically an automation. So if we go um, into this board and we say, Every time we add a new campaign, um, it's in the design board. It's gonna, uh, it's gonna, the notes are gonna be from marketing. We want to write that in here. So if we create a new campaign, we call it new. That's very dynamic. And we change the status to to design. Create some in here, and we go from. The other pain in the backside. If it's static, we can use board uh board defaults or item value defaults on the board what this allows you to do is it actually creates an automation you don't see is run via the automation en engine that when you create a new item a field will be filled in so i will always want every new item to be with the status of working on it i want the um notes to say from marketing and i want to assign uh, me good job so i can save these so Monday. Oh, Monday. Let's try that again. From, uh, from marketing. There we go. We hit save. There we go. There we are. So we're saving this as a uh, as a board level default. So uh, if I go into the marketing board and I go, uh, fun, amazing campaign. Very good. And I send this to design. What we should see is the new item is created. And these defaults are then set. Me working on it from marketing, because these are board level defaults. But these work statically. 
So you can't use this to put in and say, uh, the date needs to be plus today plus whatever, what have you. Um, it's always a static date. Like if I put today in here um, and I create a new one, yes, there we go, uh, <laughs> create a new campaign, it's going to set the date. To, I didn't hit save, did I? No, I didn't. Forgive me. It will set the date to today. It's not dynamic. It will just set the date to today. Uh, I can do it again just by typing in. Uh, it will just set the date to today. So it's not dynamic. It's just static. If you want something that's dynamic, uh, maybe with an app. Caster might be able to do it, for example. Uh, something to a test for a drop down. I am creating a board using the information. There is a field which needs a value to be written to it for each item on creation. Again, if it's static, use the um, item default value. If it's dynamic, an app might be able to do it. Say, like, take this column or whatever it is and copy it into the uh, into the other column. Um, hopefully that makes sense, Richard. Well the job <clears throat> yeah uh, build caster into the template and it should be able to just activate as you as you go straight through it uh because integrations exist on uh, template boards now so you're all you're all good to go now it's been there for like two years or so um do, 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 do. yes the different um the different sections of monday.com work management sales uh crm um dev which is fantastic for like agile um and sprints management and all that lovely sort of stuff the new one that's come out and you've actually seen me use today is uh canva and i know a lot of people that uh use miro <clears throat> and, and miro is a fantastic tool like miro is really really good but if you are paying for monday.com and you're paying for miro that's two separate invoices and uh, the full pricing of canvas hasn't been uh, fully identified yet but the, it's very competitive for what Miro can do and canvas can be built into monday.com and eventually it will become an integral part of monday.com and your workflows you'll be building blocks in canvas that can connect to particular items or particular boards you, um, embedding it will be super duper simple um for instance, what I could share very quickly, and I'll do it at a very high level, is uh, I've been using Canvas to actually help me with a timeline for um, for some, some work I've been writing. Um, and it's a really, really fantastic tool. So for anyone who knows um, Miro and uses any flow charting software, um, Canvas is exactly that. And since it's built by Monday, monday.com integration being able to import items in here is fantastic as well like drawing your items from monday.com into canvas and vice versa is super strong and with monday and their full idea of collaboration what we're able to do is we're actually able to um look forward to like uh chat collaboration and video collaboration and demonstrations you'll actually be able to use canvas for like brainstorming calls where people jump on and do annotations and, and build blocks together so for design teams and creative teams it's a massive game changer like internally myself and the uh, um, professional services team are not fully creative as much as say like marketing or a design company but i have seen multiple use cases where we will be implementing this into our internal discussions we will be using this together, whether we're working uh, within the office together, sat around uh, on a desk, or we are working from home. We'll be using Canvas to actually build out workflows and work together as a consultancy team to assist our clients. And then once we build that in Monday, we can easily share this um, with with, um, with our clients as well. It's a fantastic tool. It really, really is. Um, I can't really stress enough how we're moving away from Miro and we're building canvas because it's going to be such a, it's, it's going to be such a win, uh, such a massive win for us because it has all of what we expect from uh, monday.com and its functionality. And you can build that into canvas and have it connect to your boards as well. It's really in early stages at the moment, but if you've ever done any, um, flow charting or idea maps or or anything else that you have with like the templates that you would expect from something like 
of software like this, you know, mind maps, org charts, cross functionality, um, agile scrums, um, and critical paths. Like that's going to be huge for dev teams as well. HR and planning and mood boards and, and bullseyes and what have you. There is a fantastic wealth of power within um, Canvas that's built directly into Monday.com, which is really, really cool. And your teams at Canvas uh, don't fully represent your teams at Monday.com. So you build Canvas around like workspaces as you do with Monday and teams as you do with Monday. So you can then have a lot of control of who you let in and out of Canvas as well. If you do use Miro, I'd recommend having a look at Canvas and doing a bit of a free trial because it, it it's going to massively improve how we, we deal with our internal flow charting as well. So there's Canvas. The other thing I want to talk about is Docs because not a lot of people know about this and some people are still using like Google Docs and um, uh, Microsoft Word and what you look like, uh, Office Online, that sort of stuff, which is fantastic. That's if you're if you want to do that, you can absolutely do that. Monday.com's uh, files column allows you to bring in those files whether it be from google or whether it be from onedrive or you just want to upload the file it can exist in monday.com but monday itself has its own doc system and we actually use docs and we can move docs from our account to um, uh, other people's accounts in terms of our um our training and our processes so if we are doing a very complex build and as you can see we've been dealing with some complex uh, topics today if i'm teaching someone how to use like <coughs> change the status to, to design what have you sends it to the board it connects here it connects there it's great to do that in a feedback and training session but having the prosperity of a of a doc without a recording that people have to jump through can be really invaluable so when you're creating boards in monday.com and dashboards and what have you you can also create docs and docs are seconds at the top for a reason and docs can be really, really powerful. Uh, new process documentation. Because whereas you've got this separation when you build your docs in um, in Google Drive, in Monday.com, you can bring in a lot of powerful tools that you have built into Monday, such as AI. So AI can be used for things like the formula builder, the automations, as you know. Um, you can use AI to actually write the doc for you. Uh, let's give this a try. Um, I need a template based around delivery of a uh, of an event with plans for an RSVP board with a form. Uh, do, 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 uh, checklist. Checklist for setup and a section to show, show the event, roles, and speakers. Lovely job. And let's see how AI manages this. Oh God, it already got, I was gonna have a sip of drink, but thank you AI for being really, really good. Um, so it can build this template for us, which is really including a board, or whether this can be simple form field, et cetera, what have you. Very nice. We can then use the power of um, we can use the power of docs to then add things, not just like text formatting and quotes and notice boxes and what have you. We can actually put boards in here. We can actually fill the doc with like boards, like live boards, like change the data, and so too does it change in our board boards which is really, really cool. Uh, we can add dashboard widgets in here, actually build widgets into a doc. So I can go here, I can add below, I can add myself a widget. I can actually build like a, a battery or a, a Gantt or a calendar. Most of the widgets that you know are supported in here, like a files gallery or a pivot board. Uh, we can add a battery. There we go. We select the boards and that actually builds it in the doc for us. And then I haven't selected any statuses, so that would that would help if we did. There, there we go. There we go. So it builds the actual widget right into the dock, which is very, very, very good. Um, we've got a ton of functionality in here, mentioning different docs and people and names. 
uh, customizing tables and layouts, adding GIFs and YouTube links and galleries and bookmarks and what have you. Uh, dynamic fields for today. So if you're writing a doc and you want to say dated to today automatically, like you do in like um, Google almost certainly does it, but I know it from Microsoft. So Microsoft does that. Same with same with these docs. Embedding things out of nowhere like Airtable, Clouds and Whiteboard. Soon enough, Canvas will be embedded into your docs as well. You can save your own custom templates. So if you create a project template and you save it, you just open that template every time and change the details. As I said with the widgets, you can build in and problem solving. Do, do, do. Boating table, collaborative whiteboard, all the lovely stuff. Really, really good. Um, and with docs, you get the comments as well. So people can, oh, lovely job. Um, you get the comments as well. So you are able to add specific comments in here and comment on certain uh, details on the uh, docs as well. Lovely job. Give me one moment. Okay. Richard, you offered a question. Let me grab that to you now. Can you manipulate the text content dynamically, e.g. pulling in pulse into the body of the text? That's a very good question. Fantastic stuff. Let's have a look. <clears throat> du, du, du. I know you can pull in boards. I don't know if you can pull in items yet, though. Du, du, du. My brain is thinking that you could maybe hashtag and then the item name. Let's have a look. Uh, not item name, the um, item ID, but I'll double check that because I could be wrong. Let's have a look. No, that's just going to be plain text. Hold on, let me just try that again. That's going to be plain text. At and the item. No, okay. Oh, God. Go back there. Let's try hashtag. Not yet, but that's a very, very good sort of feature that you're able to pull in actual just singular items itself. Uh, that would be pretty good. For some reason, my brain is thinking, yes, you can do it. Only verbal docs are created in a doc column. Got you. Oh, hold on. Column values. If I create the doc in a doc column, let's do that. Let's have a go at that, shall we? There we go. Create the doc from here. Doc is a special type of file column that allows you to do docs. Uh, just... There we go. See what column values we can pull. Which be down here, column values. Select a column. Oh, item name. Would you look at that? Wow. Um, because that's for the doc that you built on that. So the answer to that question Richard, is yes, you can do that. If you create the doc, and that does make sense, dynamic values, if you create the doc against the particular item, because then Monday knows what item you're pulling. So you can pull in those dynamic values based on, so if I change this, hold on. New project. Oh, would you look at that? That's snazzy. Really good. Yeah, so you are uh, you are able to do that as long as you uh, create the doc in a doc column against that particular item. Oh, that's fantastic stuff. Fantastic. So yes, indeed you can. You can indeed. So that was Canvas and that was Docs. And they are fantastic features. They really, really are. So I would recommend, I'm not telling you to ditch Microsoft. I'm not telling you to ditch Google. But if you are lacking a bit of uh, um, you know, connectivity uh, with your documents and monday.com, or you're looking for a way to like work out workflows, and especially if you're planning a new project and you want to kind of like have it all together, you could try it in Canva, which is fantastic stuff. No, Richard, that's what I'm here for. That's absolutely what I'm here for. And it's good that we're learning together as well. Um, the docs column is actually relatively new. Um, so it's good. That's why they've added that. I was always like, oh, is there anything more with that? And, you know, there you go. We're coming up to the last 15 minutes. So um, I'm definitely going to round things off before five o'clock, maybe a few minutes before. So we all, we all get some time to just 
relax and 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 you know i want to make sure if anyone's commuting they get some time to get ready before they can go home so let's say we give it another um 10 minutes i'd like to open up the floor if there's any questions if anyone wants to see anything if there's any use cases the last thing i'd like to talk about a little bit is like just to go over sort of the reporting we have talked about this today but if there are any questions uh please do uh, fire them through Do set up something very quickly. We're waiting. So while we're waiting for questions, what I'm going to do is because um, someone did ask this before before the meeting, and I'd like to put this through. If you have uh, some time off, uh, time off, say sickness, holiday, that sort of stuff, can actually be created archived dynamically to how a board can be created from a template. Uh, that's a really good question. Let's have a look. I want to say you can create a dog, uh, uh, or was that a very? You can add a dog, but it doesn't say what kind of dog. Or is that? Let me just double check because I want to make sure that's not a. Um... Hold on, that might be a. That might be. Oh, dashboard created. Sorry, sorry, Richard. Sorry, I'm still on docs um no you can't create them dynamically their dashboards have to be manually created basically yes they 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 have to be created and sort of set up created because money can't assume what it's connecting to so it's you, you have to have that human element to be able to do so good question though hopefully one day that'd be quite good in terms of uh what we spoke about very early on and what someone asked is the idea of like um, um people taking time off and then how do we build that into like workflow and uh, workload and all that sort of stuff uh, so what we'll do is we'll connect our project boards to our there we are two one three we're going to connect this to a dashboard we're going to create our workload there we are workload and what we should be able to see is that we've got people assigned to tasks over certain uh, days and uh, we are seeing that because we haven't got a resource count resource type is person 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 i think yeah okay there we go so we do have some stuff there it is there we go so we have our workload showing what people should be doing over this period now the question that was asked is that if someone's off how do i manage that in workload now what i always lean towards with it is visibility so you could create a board like this and what you could do is you could put a form to it and with this form we can make sure that we have this as an internal form so we want to um restrict form internally so you can say who you are you can put your name in here i uh, you know i am this person um and then you can put in how many days you want off so it's like a, a leave request form and with that form people can then put in their days like oh you know um james myself and raven so i'm going to be off for the entire month of may because it's my birth month so i'm taking the entire month off I'm hoping we can get our company details changed so we're able to do that. But, you know, still fighting that good fight. Um, let's say, unfortunately, James is somehow going to be sick. This seems very dangerous, but, you know, I wish nothing but good upon um, James, one of our account managers. But he will be sick on the 5th to the 8th. Um, sounds very scary. And Raven is going to go on a trip around the world from September to December. A massive amount of time. There we go. But if we build this into our workload against our projects, we can then immediately see when people are off. 
So what I'd like to do in, with my colors, if I can, if I color matching, uh, get all the items. Uh, where is our board? No. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. I want to color by. It's good. Uh, I can't choose the color. That's something. It's, it's, it's unfortunately it's gold, which I don't want it to be gold. I want it to be sort of a bit more red or glaring. But we 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 take what we can get when Monday gives us the colors. Um, it allows us to immediately see when people are off. So as we can see here, Raven's going to be off for the holidays for these tasks. So this is actually pretty ridiculous. So I'm going to move this to be only over. Sorry, Raven, you're not getting that much time off. Um, so I'm going to put it September, October. So we can then see where the where the um, discrepancy is going to take place. So what we can do is we can actually move these tasks out of the way, or we can assign them to somebody else. So I can move this up to James instead. There we go. So now this is up to James, and this one could be up to me. Uh, me. How about there? So it's not assigned to Raven. I'd be assigned there anyway. Where do we define someone's available hours resource? Second question. An example of people integrating this with. Um, so I would look for an ability for that corporate system to be able to either export to CSV or use an app, an app, use the API to be able to pull that information in. What you need need to do on Monday is you need to define your um work days for people like a work schedule which can be done in your administration settings work schedule and you can add this schedule for like multiple people so when they should be working this that and the other uh time off you can actually set um specific times that they they will have off or or public holidays for different schedules which is quite useful public holidays is new this was normally for like actual time off but this is actually pretty new and then you can start assigning teams to that once you build this into this um into this planning that you have someone asked really earlier about days off and this is super new so they've actually built this in which is i mean like this week kind of new. my god so you can build this schedule in and once you build this schedule into monday.com you can actually then uh put this against effort capacity and then you can define it by each person. But when you put people in here for their capacity and their schedules, this work schedule will pull against um, whatever you set up at the admin level. So you want to put people into teams. You want to then set a schedule to make sure people are working the correct, you know, when they should and should not be working. And then you build that in there. Now, the schedule is going to be overall, so it's going to work for like public holidays, what that, uh, days people should be working on, this, that, and the other fantastic stuff. However, it's not going to be able to pull in what you what you outlined, Richard, like absences. Where do we define available hours and resource, um, and how do we integrate an uh, uh, annual leave system? You need to put in annual leave, like, you can put it in that work schedule, but annual leave is going to be different for different people. So for that's, that's for public holidays. What you need is an ability for people to book their annual leave or have booked annual leave. And then you need to define what capacity people have for the day and then have that annual leave count that capacity. Now, what I mean by that is I take three days off. So I've taken three days off. My capacity each day, let's say, is seven hours. Oh, God, Alex is looking for the formula column. That's what Alex is looking for. We then can say um, hours per day. What we can then do is we can say we need to take the uh, start and end of timeline, which is days of our timeline end and start. It should give me two, two days. I'm off that way, that way, that no, I should do that three. So I'm going to sum that's actually three days because we're including one because it's actually time off. cool so that's going to be three days and we want to times that multiply by uh, seven because that's seven hours a day so for those three days i am not working but i am gonna not be available for seven hours a day so if i build this into workload 
Now, there's not going to be anything else on here, but I just want to show you what this will look like just if we're looking at the um, the availability. So for Alex, for me, 7 times 5 is 35. I should be available for 35 uh, hours in the week. So my capacity, hours of the day, is 35. There we go. So for that week, I've only taken 21 hours. And I've taken that 21 hours because I've got time off. I've registered that as time off. I can't be assigned that because that's taken out my capacity because I'm not here. I'm not in the office. So I've created an item in Monday. I've done a timeline column. I've set the maximum amount of hours a day. I've gone over that. And Monday has automatically stretched that over those days. If we see ticked off 777, I'm, I'm not here. I'm not here. People then ask, like, what about AM, PM? What if I'm taking a half day? Now, a good thing to do is a half day checker and people can put this on the um on the uh on the form so a uh so start check and end yeah so if you put am or P pm i've done those the wrong way around like that there we go so you can say are you gonna like leave in the afternoon on the first day and come back in the in the afternoon the next of, of the day you come back so you're actually taking a half day on the first and last what you can do is if you have this checker you can then build this in to say that um you know and if uh, status equals am uh, then we want to minus 3.5 then we want to put that all in a minus uh, 3.5 otherwise we just want to do that well we also want to do another wrapped if but I'm going to try and keep this simple so I'm not overcomplicating tons of stuff uh, we want to put that there we want to just show that Okay, so that should work. We're doing a little bit on the fly. So if I put this to AM, it's going to minus 3.5 days from me. So immediately I'm going to get some of that time back. My capacity is going to come back a little bit because I, I, I'm putting an AM on that on the, on that last day. And you can do the same with PM. So if you set this to PM, you'll get 3.5 hours back. Same with the end. If you put AM or PM, you get 3.5 hours back. So that will make your capacity a little bit more clearer. On your workload, however, it's still going to spread it out across the um across the, the smear of the day so you're actually going to get more capacity back over those days because it takes monday doesn't know that that 3.5 should be one day it's taking it out of all of the days so if you want to do am pm you could maybe add in sub items that might be useful the use case that i use this for it didn't really matter as long as we were logging it somewhere and it's taking out their capacity people were happy but having this days off board allows people via a form to like um allow their days off you can then as a, an internal person be able to uh, mark and say that this is yet yeah, we accept this or not or it's been rejected or what have you and that could then be taken away from their capacity on a capacity view overall um Another thing you can do is you can actually create another board with like their total days. And every time that they mark some time off, it can connect to that board and minus their days. So you can see remaining days as well. So we, we've actually built a very internal sort of like um, a system with one of our clients, at how this works. Um, and it's something we'd probably like to share as a template because it's a really quite elegant little system that you just plug into uh, all of your, your workload. So hopefully, Hopefully that all makes sense and how you can manage uh, days off annual leave and that, that sort of thing. Um, I wanted to cover that because I know that was asked before the call, uh, before the webinar. But that brings us to our basically our two hours. Um, hopefully this session on like the sort of five tips that we went through, that we went through the golden rule of building, the connectivity, the automations, uh, making use of those different apps like Canvas and Docs, and then a little bit on our, our reporting our widgets as well. Hopefully this has been really enlightening. Um, I'm so glad we got so many questions. We've had like 25 questions that we've got through, which has been really good. And bless you all for like 
sticking with me for the the two hours this recording will be available um Ding. it's going to take some time to process it obviously but we will uh get this available to you once it's sorted and um yeah if you've got any follow-up questions if you want to speak to one of our team if you want to speak to uh our sales or or myself please send in an email we'll be happy to chat to you and uh hopefully i look forward to talking to you guys and working with you very closely in the future I wish you all the best with your building of Monday.com. And uh, I really uh, hope that you got something out of this session. Feedback would be appreciated. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, guys. Um, and if I don't speak to you, have a wonderful weekend as well. It's been a pleasure, guys. Take care.